This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Shalom Aleichem, Baruch Abam. We continue in Sefer Tarma Devaira, which is uh, considered one of the classic uh, Sifrei Moser. Rabbi Chasman writes in the Psicha of the Or Yahel. He says about the importance of learning Moser. He says that's an understatement. Hayesh tshuva b'loy limud amosur. Can a person come to repentance without learning Moser? Gamza ein. That's impossible. Misheyucha limtsoi davar yoyser yaker mechayim. He who could find something more precious than life, who yimtsa davar yoyser yaker mi Moser, can find something more precious than Moser. Ki Moser hu chayim. Moser is life. One only has the opportunity really to grow in a meaningful way through the regular study of Musar. Okay, we continue in the ninth Midah Vesashlech B'Metzulais Yam Kol Chatoisam, which the Tarmid identifies as a good Midah of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that Kla Yisrael had sinned in the past and God delivered them to Parai, to Sancherev, to Haman. And now they're punishing us and we do tshuva, fine. So Hashem should say, okay, Parai, you're done. We don't need you anymore. You're fired. We don't need you, Haman. We don't need you, Sancherev. But Hashem does not suffice it at that. Hashem says, why do you do it? So we pointed out, I mean, this is a classic philosophical question. Hashem uh, decreed that they did it. What do you mean why they do it? And the, as we mentioned yesterday, the Rambam says, well, uh, Pari didn't have to do it. Or the Rambam says they, they went above and beyond but according to the Tarmah Devara, even if not, even if God decreed Pari should do it, even if they did exactly what God says, they will be punished. This is the Midah of Asashach bin Tzula Yam. That the moment the din is administered and the din comes, and Kla Yisro is Makabalit, and they, we, um, the Tarmah Devara explained that when a person says Vidoy, that is a Kabbalas Yisurim. And our point is, God, we know we have to experience some kind of purification. We pray, make it in a way that it does not involve Bittu Taira. But once we've accepted it, now the punishment will automatically go on the one who threatened us. It's a rule of Hanhaga. It's not a punishment. Paro is not being punished. It's, there's a Midas Hadin, and it's not going to go on us. Because on us, we accepted the Yisurim, we did Shuva. And now God says, okay, the din has to go somewhere, the din will now go on Parai. But the Tarmid is going to learn, yam God will throw on he who's compared to the sea. The wicked are compared to the sea. God will put all the Midas Hadin and all the Chatoim on the wicked. V'sashlech, God will throw al yam on those who are compared to the depths of the sea, namely the wicked, Kol Chatosam. So the Tarmid Devara continues, we're on page Chavdalet on the fourth line. V'hatam she'akadosh baruchu gozar aloi lomay she'kol mi she'yasa ken yizbato. The reason why God decreed on His world that whoever brings suffering on Kla Yisrael will ultimately be nullified is as follows. He says, V'zet tam v'sa behema taroigu. The halacha is that if a behema um, if a man lives with a behema, so you got to kill the man and you kill the animal, what did the animal do wrong? Because what, there's a concept that once Midas Hadin is uh, invoked, it has to go somewhere. And even if it's also going to go on the man, it will go on the behema. Or the stone, the stone that was used for skila is buried. The sword that's used for hereg is buried. Because there's a concept that the, anyone who causes suffering to Klal Yisrael, ultimately at some point in time Hashem's Rachamim kicks in, and then the Midas Hadin has to sort of devolve on the item that caused suffering. And V'cheino Evan Shal Mitzvah Haneskolen V'hasayev Shal Mitzvah Hanearogen Tu'unin Kfura, they need to be buried. Levatel Mitziusam, to nullify their existence, V'koicham and their strength, Acher Sheigmar Dinam, after their they have been used to carry out their din. This is actually the essence of the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. 
Nimsru Yisrael Biyad Melech Babel. In the dream, Bnei Yisrael saw they were being given over into the hands of a Babylonian king, and the Babylonian king was represented by a golden head, Reishe Didahav, a head of gold. Nichnahu Reisha, but immediately after we were administered to Nebuchadnezzar, that golden head was crushed in the hands of the Persians, the Nimsu Biyad Paras, that was delivered into the hands of the Persians. Shehain, they are Chadohi Uderohi Di a chest and arms of silver. So as soon as Nebuchadnezzar punished us, Nebuchadnezzar is immediately punished because God's Midas Harachimim comes in rather quickly. And then Paras was punished by Yavan. Until finally the Jews were given to the feet in the dream, and the feet are Mehendi Parzel, some were iron, or Mehendi Chasaf, and some were pottery. This represents Esav and Yishmael. And what is the ultimate good? What is the ultimate good? HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mamidam, God will lift up the Jewish people, Va'oisa Bahem Din, and conduct justice to our enemies, Kedach Siv. Like it says, Chitzai Achalebam, I'll use up my arrows against the Jews, Jewish people's enemy, which means Chitzai Kolem, my enemy, my arrows will be used up. The Yisrael, Enam Kolem, but the Jews will not be depleted. And then, the um, the Navi the pasuk in Daniel says beidayin in Aramaic beidayin means then daku kachada they are destroyed together they are crushed together what is that the parzala the iron the chaspa the earthenware nechasha the copper chaspa the silver dava all the nations who who cause us suffering. God's mercy will kick in and they will all be destroyed. Now, Hine Bahas Cholok said in the beginning, it says, Umechas Litzama Araglohi. It says that the image will be smote on its foot. What does that mean? Ain mi kolatsam el araglov. The only thing left over for the uh, image is its feet. Shekvar nesbatel koicham. Its strength has already nullified va'avru roish udroi umaohi, and the heads, the arms, and the body were removed. But nevertheless, in other words, even though there's nothing left but its legs, because everything lost power, but ultimately God will destroy all the nations of the world. Ve'im kolzeh l'basoyf dakul kachado. In the end, they will all be crushed together. Asad hakadosh baruch hu Hamid samal. God will stand up in judgment, the Samachmen, Vaharishoim, Oisamasav, and the wicked who do his actions, Upul Oisav, the Yasabahem Adin, God will conduct judgment against them. Ah, so you ready? This is how Tarmid Devara touches up and, and understands and identifies the Midah of the Sashlech Bem Tsulas Yom Kalchatoisam. Behainu, the Sashlech Bem Tsulas Yom Kalchatoisam. God throws into the depths of the sea all of his sin. Yerdse, what this means is, Mashlech Koyach Adin, God throws the force of judgment, Lihipoel Ayidei Elu Shehem Tsulas Yom, that it should be effective against those who are compared to the sea. Who is compared to the sea? The wicked. Like the Pasuk says, Vaharashoyim Kayom Nigrash. The wicked are like the spewing sea. Ki hashke la yucha, they cannot be tranquil. Vayagar Shumemov, and its waters eject. Refesh Vatit, mud and cement. So, in other words, all of those nations that threatened and that harassed us. They will get Midas Hadin, not as an Oynesh, but that is the reality of how God set up the world. That once they drum up Midas Hadin, even if momentarily it's directed at us, ultimately it goes on to the heads of our enemy. Elohim Ha'oisim Din Bi Yisrael. These are those who conduct Din against Kal Yisrael. Sheyashiv Acharkach Kol Gemulam Barayisham. God will restore to them all of their. Recompense will go on to their heads. There's an interesting Gemara in Gitin. The Gemara says that God sent Neron Kezar against the Jewish people. 
and he comes to Jerusalem and he sh- throws an arrow to the east and it lands at Jerusalem. He throws an arrow to the west, it lands in Jerusalem. In every direction he throws the arrow, it lands in Jerusalem. And Nero Kesar sees he's going to be successful and he asks the kid to say a Pasuk. And the kid says basically, God wants you to destroy the temple and then he's going to wipe the floor with you. By the way, he ran away and who came out of him? Rav Meir, that's right, Rav Meir. And the uh, Rav Goldberg has a very interesting question. That means God is telling this Nero Kesar destroy the temple. So why will God wipe the floor with him? He will, God basically just gave him a prophecy that he should do it. So according to the Rambam, you could say, well, God didn't say he has to do it, someone will do it. So the fact that he chose to do it, he's going to be punished. But the Ramban says the reason why if somebody fulfills the decree of God, they are not rewarded, but instead they're punished. The Ramban says because these wicked, their kavana is not to help Hashem, and they usually go overboard. So the question is, why could a Niron Kezar have kavana to mekayim the Ratzon of Hashem, do exactly as God wanted, and he wouldn't have been punished? What's he so scared of, according to the Ramban? Because according to the Ramban, a Russia who carries out the plan of God is only punished if that's not his kavana, and if he goes overboard. But if that is his kavana and he doesn't go overboard, then he won't be punished. So why couldn't Nero Kezar do that? So says Rav Goldberg, very simply, because according to the Timer Devaira, even though maybe you're exempt from punishment, but the reality is, once a Russia threatens a tzaddik, and the tzaddik does tshuva, it's not a punishment. The reality is, it will all all the Midas Adin will go and hit the Rasha on his head. Vahatam, the reason is, the reason is, Mimnesha Achar Shi Yisrael Kiblu Adin, once the Jewish people have accepted the judgment, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mesnachim, God regrets, Afilu Amash Kodam, even on the evil and even uh, God regrets the fact that He allowed the wicked to even cause trouble to us in the first place. The Toivea El Boinam. God will now stand up for the cause and say, why, why did you even threaten the Jewish people? What do you mean why? You wanted me to. You told me to. They deserved it. But the Midas Harachamim is that even though for a moment Midas Hadin allows it, Midas Harachamim comes in very quickly and then says, you know what, they didn't really deserve it. They did tshuva and he throws it back at the Russia. V'loi dai, it's not enough. Ela ani safti ma'ad, God says to the wicked, I was only a little bit angry, v'hima azru l'ra, and they took it uh, f- uh, further. And as of Hashem tomorrow, we'll uh, study how we could apply this midah in our own lives. How could we emulate the midah of the sashlech b'mitzula siyam kal chatoisem. Wishing everyone a great day. Shkayach. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.